Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. I have 20% battery on my phone, which I'm recording with right now. Um, there's a plane that's just going by outside. I have a new camera setup thing that I'm going to try. Um, and my partner's going to be home with my dog in like two minutes. He's out on a walk. <laughs> but I really want to just get this... Get, I really, I, I, okay, I really, really wanted to film this tag. There's, like, so many tags that I've been wanting to film, but I really wanted to film this one in particular, and I kind of wanted to just, like, do it because I'm in the middle of working on a zine right now that I I, I don't want to, like, lose steam on it. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to pick a tag that, you know, wouldn't require too much thought on my part. <laughs> so I'm doing a tag to uh, L Logan at Larkin Legends tag my forever decks uh so it's hashtag forever decks and the concept is like decks that you will have to pry from my cold dead fingers um <laughs> which i really really like because basically this tag is it's similar to you know my the um only 10 decks or top 10 decks or that sort of thing but um the thing that I like about this tag in particular is that it feels like it has an emphasis on decks that you like sort of regardless of how much use they may or may not get in your collection, um, it, whether or not you have decks that are similar, whether or not you can really like rank them in comparison to other decks that you have in your collection, like you may have another deck that just is, you know, that you f feel is objectively better at, at certain things or better in some ways, but um, for whatever reason it is, you just prefer this one. <laughs> um, just like you, you would have a harder time letting go of this one. I guess it's sort of also similar to Desert Island decks. I don't know. All of those have like a little bit of a d different flavor. And I think that this tag has exactly the right flavor to get me to actually like try it, you know, actually, <laughs> actually go up and be, and, 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 and order the new thing and give it a try. <laughs> um, Anyway, so here we go. Um, the first one of my forever decks, like one that you that I would uh, you'd, you'd have to pry it out of my cold dead fingers that I would really hate to lose, um, is this this one. It's just the um, plaid back Rider Waite Smith, and I made this little box for it. It was one of the first boxes I ever made, and I'm really proud of it. <laughs> um, here we go. And yeah, this is just like your classic, you know, plaid back, yellow box, 19 whatever, 70s or something. Like it's pre-copyright on the on the card, so, you know, I think it's like US Games 1970s sometime. I don't know why I'm like suddenly giving it a shuffle, but here we go. And the reason that I would never want to get rid of this deck ever is because it has tremendous sentimental value. This was my grandma's deck, and she um, gave it to me when she died. Um, and I think that's really funny, <laughs> because my grandma was always sort of a, into this New Age stuff, and mystical stuff, and spiritual stuff, and stuff like tarot, and so it's no surprise to me that she had this. I don't think I knew while she was alive that she had this, but, you know, I cannot say that I'm surprised that she had this. Um, and I think that she knew that I would have been interested in it because, you know, she knew that I was a very artistic person and I just, I get, I, I know that she knew that I would have liked it, but I, especially when I was younger and especially when I was a teenager, I was incredibly skeptical, um, of everything. Like even just the philosophical skeptic of just <laughs> being skeptical of literally everything ever. And so I think she knew that if she just gave it to me or tried to encourage me to use it while she was still around, that I wouldn't have tried it. Or or I, I might have tried it and been like, oh yeah, cool images. and But I wouldn't really have cared or like I wouldn't have connected with it. I certainly wouldn't have, you know, developed a tarot collection and all this stuff. Um, so I just think it's so funny that like, of course she would like wait until she died to, <laughs> to like give it to me. Um, and so that's why it's sentimental. And this one was, was definitely used. Like she definitely used it. Let me try to sort of gather this up. It has, you know, bowing in both directions from doing riffle bridge shuffles. All of this grime on the side is like 
cigarette stains, you know, I've tried to clean it and it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work, but you know, there's cigarette stains from, from her smoking and, you know, it's just, it's incredibly sentimental. It is the one that I quote unquote learned on, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, like I would be, this is the one like out of any of them that I would probably like physically grip and like fight someone for, <laughs> um, quite literally. So that's my grandma's RWS. I also feel like that story kind of gives me like street cred. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like that feels like a cool enough story among, among tarot communities. And it sort of like follows the old, um, BS adage that like, you're supposed to either steal or be gifted your first, uh, tarot deck and all that stuff. Like, I just think it, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the way to put it. It's like, I think it kind of gives me some street cred. That's not why I'm keeping it, but I just, that's, that's why I always like sharing that story. I think it's cause it's like, Oh, whoa, Wesley, you're so cool that you got your tarot deck that way. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, the next one, what order am I going to go in? The next one, I guess I'll go with the one that's also probably not a surprise, is the Bohemian Animal Tarot, again, in a box that I made. Um, and this is not a surprise because I have made a long, deep dive thing, like, it's probably like an hour and 20 minutes total or something between the majors and minors um, of this deck, and uh, I feel like most people kind of or like a lot of people who found my channel found me through this deck because of Lisa Pepez's channel, because like somehow I brought up the Bohemian animal tarot. I sort of encouraged her to give it a try and I showed it off during my uh, appearance on her channel in the say yes to the deck. Um, like I already had this deck, but <laughs> I was sort of, we were just talking about it there. And so now I feel like a lot of people kind of know me for this deck. <laughs> and I, I am not mad at that. I, I think it's cute. I really love, um, I really love all the depictions in this deck. I love the animals. I love the, um, okay. I can't say that I love, like, this is, okay. I do love the art, but it's not like my perfect art, you know? I mean, I don't know that there is such a thing as perfect art, but it's not, you know, the, the super colorful pastels, oil pastels, not pastel colors, but like the, the medium is not my usual thing. Um, but I just spent so much time with this deck and it was one of my first, um, and it just feels, <laughs> okay, so you know how people will talk about like their fantasy self and their actual self? So like, if we're going to talk about more selves, I think I have fantasy selves and then even just like in myself, I kind of have, like, the projected ones of, like, you know, the self that's super cool and punk, and, you know, and it's sort of like every every facet, every image of yourself that you project or don't project, each has pieces of truth and, I think, pieces of, um, of delusion, pieces, pieces of, you know falsity or, or pieces of, of fantasy that you're building either for, for yourself or um, socially you know, that sort of thing. And this one, this deck in particular, I feel like is kind of closest to my actual self, if that makes any sense. Like, if you just sort of drill down and erase a lot of the, um, I don't know, erase a lot of the stuff that I like and erase a lot of the, um, stuff that I make and image that I put forth and ideas that I have about myself. And you just kind of like wipe all that away and you get it like that very core essence of selfhood, like the platonic ideal of, of Wesley or whatever. Obviously like any, any sort of physical presentation <laughs> or, or like physical interpretation or artistic interpretation or whatever it was like, it's never going to get at that pure core self. Cause that's just kind of impossible. But this deck probably comes the closest of, like, this, um, this feeling and these animals and the, the, the depth of color, the depth of technicolor. Like, I really, I 
it's not even just that I relate or that I see myself in the cards. It's like, this is myself, sort of whether I want it to be or not. Which is, and I, I can't believe that I'm saying all that right now because, like, <laughs> I am not immune to wanting to appear cool. I mean, I literally just told you guys that I wanted to, you know, that part of the reason I like sharing that story about my grandma's deck is because you know, it just sounds cool and it, and it kind of makes me look cool. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we are social creatures. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, but like, I don't know. This is, this is sort of me on like a different level. Me, me without all the pomp and circumstance and me without all the fantasy and I don't know if that makes any sense, and I'm at the end of the deck, so I'll just put it away. <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. Anyway, and so, like, because of that, and because I've spent so much time with it, and I've just, like, developed such a big bond with it, um, you'd have to pry this deck from my cold, dead hands. what I tell you? A few minutes? Um, longer than two, but now my partner and my dog are coming back. Milo! Hi, Sean. I'm on camera. Milo! Let me see if I can... Milo, come here! Milo! Here's my dog. Hi, Milo. Here's Sean. Hello. <laughs> okay, so the next Forever deck that I have um, is one that I don't think I've really talked about very much, um, if at all, on this channel. Like, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it. Granted, I feel like I probably have multiple decks that I've just, like, never mentioned or mentioned very briefly because I don't, um, make all that many tarot videos. And to be perfectly honest, I think part of that is because I keep getting in my head, like, I want this channel to be about tarot and zines, so I have to make more zine videos to, like, keep up with the tarot videos. <laughs> or, like, I hold myself back from making tarot videos because it's like, no, I need to make a zine video first. And it's like... Anyway, well, we'll <laughs> I know it's pro it's kind of stupid, but anyway, um, the next forever deck that I have is the Guided Hand Tarot, um, and this is this one is another one that I think it's it's just especially sentimental because I've had it for such a long time. Like it was one of the very first decks that I that I purchased for myself, and I just really... <laughs> I love that this is the first one that showed up. Um, I just really like it. And I don't even know that, like, my my appreciation or my love of it really has to do with, like, oh, I... or, or let, Okay, let me restart that sentence. I don't know if the reason that this is a forever deck is because of any sense of deep love or use or whatever out of this deck. Um, I think it just kind of... It's sort of sentimental in, like, a in a weird way of, like, it represents this, um, this part of my... It, it sort of represents, like, the adventurous spirit, I guess, that, um, sort of nudged me into taking the plunge to actually study tarot more in depth and, like, get into the artwork and sort of accept that tarot is is a very important hobby and, and piece of my life for me. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go back and show this uh, sun card. I also, I feel like the sun card... That's exactly what I looked like when I was a little kid. Um, <laughs> the fucking, like, girly dress and all. Um, so, I guess it just feels like... I'm keeping this for the same reason that you would keep, like, a, a notebook or, like, journals from your childhood. Or not even journals necessarily, but, like, like a a scribble painting that you turned in for elementary school homework that it's like there's no there's no rational reason that you should feel particularly attached to it 
And really, it's not even that you have a particular love for it. It's like, oh, well, I know it's not rational, but I can feel it. That sort of thing. It's just kind of like you keep it for the sake of of the memory. Even if you don't remember doing anything with it, even if you don't remember making it, it's like, well, you just, you got to keep some things from when you were a little kid because that sort of, I don't know, it just like serves as, as proof that you were there, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, so that's what this deck is to me is it's just like, it's proof that I was there. It's proof that I, you know, it's proof. It's proof of a of a step that I took, and and proof of a. Um, I don't know. Proof of something, <laughs> and not even that I need to prove it for anybody else. It's just like that's I don't know. That's why I have it. <laughs> that's why I really like this tag is because it doesn't have to make any goddamn sense. I can keep it just you know. This is a forever deck just because it is, and sometimes. That's that's all that it is, and that's <laughs> more than enough. So that's a guide to Tantaro. Okay. Um, okay, so for this next one, we'll do the Blind the Sun Illustrated Tarot. And this one is a forever deck for me because of the amount of use that I get out of it. Um, I Of course, if I'm going to get a lot of use out of a deck, then it means that I like it in a lot of sense. Like, I like the cardstock, I like the aesthetic, I like the black and white, I like the lines. I've talked about this deck before, for sure, because I use it so much. Um, but that's that's the reason why this is a forever deck, is because, like, I know that this is a go-to for me. Um, I know that it's going to be easily readable, but I'm also going to have a lot of fun with it. I have a really easy time telling stories using this deck. Like, if I were to, you know, lay out multiple... How am I going to do this? Like, lay out multiple cards next to each other, I can see a lot of stories being told through the cards, um, which also makes it a lot easier to use. Um, so, it's a forever deck just because I feel like it's kind of... It's kind of hard to find an all-rounder like that. Um, I also and I really like it because it's sort of like it's suitably gothic, but also suitably goofy um, for my discerning tastes. <laughs> you know, it um, I can see myself in it, but I also I can see archetypes in it. Um, and generally, another reason is because I really like using this deck for street reading. Like, if I ever busk for um, tarot readings um, just around Halloween time or at summer festivals or that sort of thing, um, because of a few very specific things, is that one, it is suitably weird, it's suitably spooky. Um, so I think that kind of... It has the right vibe for, like you know, oh, this this scrappy mystical punk on the side of the road who's gonna read you read your tarot cards, like <laughs> which is that's the that's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um and it also it's mostly animals, so it's pretty um gender neutral, age neutral, race neutral, which is nice. Um it also speaking of being age neutral, it doesn't have any nudity, which I couldn't give less of a shit, but when I'm reading for other people in an environment where there might be kids that I am reading for or near, it's always something that I want to keep in the back of my mind because I'm sure that a lot of parents would not be too pleased if you, like, turn over a card and there's, like, big titties looking straight at them or, you know. Frankly, I don't know that I would care, but it's just something that's like, I do not want to have to worry about that. Uh, it's also not too, too violent for sort of the same reasons of, like, you don't want to show someone... Funny thing is, like, I feel like a lot of Americans have um, far fewer hang-ups about violence in imagery than nudity. Um, that's <laughs> a very American thing. Um, but yeah, like, I don't have to worry about any of those things, and I can just trust that it's a it's like a fun and scrappy and punky and good um, reader, like no matter what. So I've just grown very attached to it, and that's why Blind the Sun. Jesus. Illustrated Tarot. 
is one of my forever decks. Okay. Next up is the Autonomic Tarot. I know that I've mentioned this one several times before. Um, it's a very strange little 30-card uh, deck, so it has two cards, the Ace and the Ten, for each of the minors, and then um, the 22 majors. And this deck is just so cool. And, like, this is a forever deck for me because it makes me feel cool just to have it and just to look at it. <laughs> is that is that terrible that, like, I want to have a deck because it makes me feel cool? No. like I mean, no, that's not terrible because that's the same reason that's, like, you know, is it terrible that you you know, have a leather jacket because it makes you feel cool. It's like, no, that's the whole, that's the whole point of it. And I think to a certain extent, it's like, that's part of what I enjoy about tarot. It makes me feel cool. And it is cool. It makes me feel cool because it's cool. Like, <laughs> and this one just, it's so, it's so wacky. It's so, um, it's very shaped, <laughs> very imaginative. I, it's, it's just got the right feeling, and I just really enjoy looking at it and staring at it. And um, I just would never want to get rid of it. I kind, I don't read with it very often. I mean, it's not exactly. You can probably guess it's not exactly an easy reader. It's something that you have to like, you know, work work with a lot. Um, and I don't mean work with as in, as in get to know it, but it's like, you, you, you know, it's a little hard to figure out sometimes, but it's like, God, just like fucking, it's just so cool. <laughs> like, why would I, how could I ever possibly get rid of it? And sometimes it's like, it's just as simple as that, I guess. So there you go. <laughs> this is the autonomic tarot. Gonna put it back in the box. Okay. Um, I guess sort of along those lines, but in a more practical sense, is the Bad Girl Tarot. And I got this one relatively recently, um, recently enough that I don't think that it made it into my goth decks video, like, four months ago. I can't remember. Um, this is a tarot deck. It's, it's pretty large. <laughs> um, I really like this it's upside down I really like this because I know that it's always like a little pick-me-up but it's a it's sort of tongue-in-cheek and um very sorry I just kind of got distracted by this one I really like this card um it's very comic-y it's and it feels like talking to a bunch of best friends. Like, like using this tarot deck makes me feel that I'm in a cool punk girl gang. And, um, or, you know, it's, it, it feels Riot Girl. It feels like, you know, it feels like I can actually talk to them. I can actually work with it. And then I'm just always bound to get some advice that is going to be you know, authentic and, um, not even necessarily the most helpful, but, but I will always feel seen and, and therefore somewhat empowered by this deck. I guess that's the thing is like, you know, it just, oh my God, this fucking devil. I love it. It just puts me in the right mood no matter what. It's really good for me in the mornings and also when I just need not a pick me up like in a in a you know feel better kind of way, but a pick me up and it's like in like a cool ant. All right, get up, dust yourself off. You can handle it. You're cool. You're cool. You're tough. You're punk. You can do it. Uh, <laughs> in that kind of way, um, definitely reminds me of a lot of um, of like Tank Girl and 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 Riot Girls and just. I don't know, it's really encouraging in that way. The artist is a comic artist, primarily, um, which I really, I just really like. Um, and I just feel like I couldn't ever get rid of this because it feels like 
I would be losing my gang. It would it'd be like leaving my leaving my gang, leaving my my cool after school delinquent club gang, leaving my motorcycle gang. It's like I don't I don't want to leave them. You know, it feels like I'd be lo I'd be, you know, not that I'd be not that they would stop being friends with me or whatever, but it's like I'd be giving up um I'd be giving up my friends. <laughs> if that makes sense. So, yeah, I I really like this deck because I like hanging out with it. I guess I'll put it that way. And it's a forever deck because, you know, I never want to stop hanging out with it. I always want it to be there to, to, you know, be able to hang out with me if I, if I want to. That's the bad girl tarot. Okay. This video probably could have been like a, um, top 10 decks maybe because I do have 10. Um, so we're on number six. No, that was number six. So now we're on number seven. Uh, next up, we'll do this one. These next couple are probably going to be no surprise to anybody. New wave tarot. Really love this one. Incidentally, this was also one that I got relatively early on in my tarot, um, journey and my tarot adventures, whatever you want to call it. Um, this particular copy, too, makes me happy to have because I, um, I originally saw it when it was out of print, and this is around the first printing, so there was really no idea if there would ever be another one. And I reached out to the creator directly and said, you probably get this question all the time. Is there any any possible way that I could get my hands on this. And then months later, you know, after saying it's like, we don't have a plan to reprint it, but you know, I'll keep an eye out for you. And you know, perfectly nice, perfectly, you know, understanding, wonderful response. And then like months and months later, they wrote me an, a message that said like, Hey, I don't know if you even still use this email, but I was cleaning out the back of my closet and I found this copy that we had used to, show off the deck at, um, at conventions or, you know, we had used this deck. It's, it's definitely used cause it was like a, a sample deck that people could flip through and whatever. And so it was already kind of dinged up and the edges were, I mean, you can't, you can't hardly even tell, you know, it's just like worn in a little bit, but they're like, if you want that, I'd be happy to send it to you. And I was like, Oh my God. Yes. Thank you. Holy shit. And I'm just like, I'm so incredibly flattered that they even remembered and that they even cared and that they even were like, hey, I wonder if that guy who sent me that message, I wonder if he still wants it, you know, like just to even it just even think of me. It's like it's so sweet. It's such a sweet story. And so that's why even like this particular copy I could never get rid of, too. Um, and also just this deck always makes me feel better. Um, and one thing I really like doing with it is that, so each, each card has, um, you know, a different new wave artist featured on it. And so one thing that I really like doing is, okay, I have a little story about that card too. <laughs> um, one thing that I really like doing is, um, going through pulling a card and then while I'm thinking about that card and writing it down, because like a lot of times I like to write my thoughts on each card, I'll pull up a song by that artist and I'll listen to it. And so it just feels like it makes the whole experience of reading this with this deck more interactive, <laughs> um, which I really like. Um, and not to mention that, you know, now this is indeed out of print with absolutely no plans to reprint it ever. And so I could, you know, it'd be really hard to get back, but I feel like in general, I'm trying not to think too much about like how hard would it get, be to get this deck back, but more just like, well, what would I just not want to get rid of in the first place, no matter what? <laughs> and this is definitely one of them. And I'll just tell you like the other reason that I don't know if I could ever get rid of this deck is admittedly sort of a superstitious reason. But, um, when I went in for my, uh, interview with the library that I currently work at, I was really, really nervous. And I pulled a cup, I pulled a card just like right before I left the house because I didn't have time for anything. And I was just freaking out. And I just pulled a card right before I left the house from this deck. And I got this card, which is Cindy Lauper as the Page of Swords. 
And the Page of Swords is my Significator card, and it's one that I use a lot, um, and it's one that definitely is immediately recognizable as me, and so, you know, no matter what, <laughs> I just pulled this card and I felt like it was absolutely saying, just be yourself. And not only that, but, like, be be your cool, punky, spunky self, show your excitement like, like Cindy Lauper, just, you know, be weird, be wild, be yourself. And then, you know, here I am. I got the job, but what's funny is that, like, they had actually hired someone, like, just before me, and I was, like, one of the last interviews or whatever, and then they just saw how excited I was about it, and so they literally, like, hired me anyway, even though the original job had already been filled. <laughs> so, I mean, I could never get rid of this deck just for that. It's, like, it's my good luck deck, <laughs> if, if nothing else. <laughs> Um, so that's a new wave tarot. The next one, like I said, probably no surprise, is Dame Darcy's Witchy Cat. Um, so I was kind of talking with the Bohemian Animal Tarot that, like, I think that the Bohemian Animal Tarot is one deck that people really associate heavily with me, like, um, and I definitely do that with other tarot tubers as I'll see, and it's like, oh, yep, I, it, this deck, it's gonna be with you, like, I mean... With Logan, for example, who created this tag, it's very easy because Logan has made two Lenormand decks, and uh, well, three actually, but you know the two that I associate in particular with Logan are the um, pink salt and wait, yeah, pink salt black sugar or black salt pink sugar. I think it's black salt pink sugar. I always mix them up, but you know Lenormand decks that <laughs> you know it's easy when when the tarot tuber has actually created their own. <laughs> uh, deck to associate that with them. But you know, like, everybody knows that when you think about Lisa Pepez, you think about the Mons Tarot. And when you think about Julie at Peekaboo Rose, you think about the Everyday Witch. And so I always kind of wonder, like, are there people that watch me and then, you know, see, you know, oh, will we think about Wesley? And we think about this tarot deck. And I... I think it probably is the Bohemian Animal, just because that's what people kind of know me as. But if people have been watching more videos lately, um, I wonder if this is the deck that people associate with me with. Because I feel like I talk about it a lot. Um, and I kind of I kind of hope that people associate this deck with me, because I really like it. And I say this all the time, but it feels very zany. Um and just very scrappy. It's got animals, which, you know, I'm definitely an animal person. Everybody knows that I'm an animal person, that I'm like an animal deck person, and that I like anthro and furry animals. Um, and I like the animal heads on human bodies. And so naturally, like, this is like the, this deck is like what I hope people associate with me because I really, really love it. I do think this is very, um, genuinely me. I was talking, you know, it's not just about what image I want to project, but it, I do also think this is a very, very genuinely, you know, Wesley kind of deck. Um, and I just always have a lot of fun with this deck. Like I use it for general readings and I use it for readings for other people but this is also the one that I reach for if I kind of want to try something new um or if I want to try just like an activity with my tarot cards then I'll usually go with this one um like I have this book I'm not going to reach for it but it's called the tarot activity book by Andy Matzner and it has just a, like a lot of fun kind of prompty type activities to engage with your tarot cards um for self-development and also just for fun and this is always the deck that I use for that like it was one where you pick out the cards that you would want to invite to your birthday party and I was like oh well speaking of which like the page of wands is totally invited to my birthday party look at this guy um yeah so I could never get rid of this deck I just love it so much and I also just I love Dame Darcy, and I uh, just sort of, like, as a creator, I admire her so much. I admire her work and um, her attitude. So, like, I kind of like having having this for that reason, too. And it's just, like, so special. And I really like when I've used a deck so much that it starts to get worn in. You can kind of see on this one that the edges are getting a little bit worn in. It has, like, a black gilding that's 
you know, wearing off in places because I'm... I wouldn't say I'm especially rough with my decks, but, you know, shit happens. <laughs> and it just it just makes me happy to, you know... I feel like this, this deck is, like, a really comfortable but beautiful chair. <laughs> Does that make any sense? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, I'm getting thirsty. I gotta wrap this up. So, the... Next one that I have, the second to last one here, is the Badger's Forest Tarot. And this one's kind of special. Um, this one... How can I... This one is special because it's one of the decks, one of, one of two decks, um, that really helped me once and for all shake off that perpetual skepticism that was gnawing at the back of my mind. And I'm still, you know, I'd still probably consider myself to be a skeptical person, but this is just so freeing and so open in a different way that I just, um... It's really important to me, I guess. This this deck is really important to me because I think that it represents a very powerful shift in my life from the sort of trappings of adolescence to comfortable, um, balanced adulthood, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, where my... Uh, my sort of hard-headedness, but also insecurities of of adolescence, this really felt like the turning point. I suppose you could call it like a Saturn Return deck in that sense. I haven't quite experienced my Saturn Return officially, but I feel like mentally I kind of have. Um, I guess we'll have to see what happens. Like, if this is like... What the hell is, is like, a result of... Oh, fuck, I'm... Okay. What is the reverse of an aftershock? Is there, like, a pre-shock or something? Or, like, you know how animals... Okay, I don't make... I don't mean to make this sound like a big disaster, but you know how animals will, like, run uphill when they sense a, a tsunami or a flood coming? It kind of feels like that, where, <laughs> you know, this was the... This was the part that really helped me get out of the... Out of the valley that was going to be drowned and see things for... Uh, you know, from a different perspective, and like this, this is a this is what this deck was for me, <laughs> just experientially, um, and it's just again like I very I rarely use it because it's so I really really have to focus on it and sink into it, but when I do, it is another storytelling deck. It's another deck that I can see stories in very easily, and it just makes me feel magical using it um this particular card just reminds me very much of this moment from my childhood when i was visiting um washington state's uh um second beach uh near forks with some of my friends on a class trip and we were we had this playing pretend game where i was a wolf and my friend was a dragon and my other friend was a vampire and we were like while we were on the beach all day, we were just, like, playing, and so I guess it just kind of feels like, it feels like that's me, that's what I was doing, and, um, yeah, so I guess there's just, like, a lot of little, a lot of little connections where I can, I can kind of see my magical self in this deck. I, my magical self has a name, I guess you could call it, like, a witch's name, but I'm kind of just gonna keep that to myself for now, because I'm not sure if I want to share it or not. Um, it's not that special. It's just like a regular ass name, but you know what I mean? It's just, you know, I want, I, I don't know. Names are a big deal for me. So yeah, like, <laughs> look at this little magician. You know, I guess this is just, this is a very special deck for me, um, in, in what it's done for me and what it represents and, um, the moments when I use it. So, you know, I would never, ever want to part with it. Okay. And the very last 
friggin... Okay, hang on. I'm usually pretty good at putting decks back in the tuck boxes. This one's having a... There we go. Mm, there we go. Have, having a bit of time. Okay. The very last deck that I have is another one that feels very magical and special in that sense, um, but also a little bit more down-to-earth, and I guess I would, I sort of refer to it as, like, my Tiffany Aching deck from the uh, Discworld sub-series featuring Tiffany Aching, who's, like, this young, very practical, very uh, Scottish witch. <laughs> and I keep it in this little drawer <laughs> which is this whole this drawer is literally the whole reason i wanted to film like this and it's called the hidden forest oracle and that's why i keep it in this drawer because it's like ooh, it's hidden and then you take it out it's like it's the hidden forest it's hidden in the drawer isn't that the coolest thing in the world <laughs> um yeah <laughs> so this whatever this deck is a pretty small little uh, 33 card oracle deck and it's got these little um, uh, tomb cards I think they're called and they're basically like these are the meaning cards for each uh, for each card in the deck like it gives you the keywords for each one and then the images themselves they're just these black and white images on this colored tone of these different um, magical items scenes animals and things. It's very homey. It's very practical. And it's it's grounded. Uh, it's just square. And it gives you... I don't know. It's just like... It's so inspiring. I've done art pieces inspired by this deck. And I guess the reason that I would never want to get rid of it is because, again, for one, it puts me in this magical mindset um, very, very easily. But also, it's because uh, this is sort of the deck that helped me work through a lot of stuff, uh, like a lot of uh, concepts of skepticism and sort of getting to that very, uh, while we're on the subject, Terry Pratchett-like place of um, accepting magic as just part of a, of everyday life not in like an otherworldly mystical sense but just in a very down-to-earth practical goofy sense and um you know like magic doesn't have to be a big deal nothing has to be a big deal but also it is a big deal <laughs> so that's all the cards like i said it's just kind of it's just kind of a sweet little deck but i really it's just really special to me and it just feels like a like my own special little secret like oh you know i can i can get my well out and i can just like like go deep in the well and i can picture myself as just like a little a little witch going to get water from the well and <laughs> see a coyote along the way and whatever like i guess that's just that's why it's really special and i i just i just love it <laughs> So there you go. Uh, those are all of my um, all of my forever decks. All the decks that you would have to pry from my cold dead hands that I would probably physically fight somebody for. And, um, you know, if they tried to take them away from me. And ones that I've just built up uh, a sort of especially special connection with. Almost regardless of the amount of use just these are these are the the decks that i really i really feel and that i really love and that i if i like if i had to get rid of every other deck if i had to get rid of every deck that i had these would be the ones that i would be really sad to lose like the others i could i could probably get over it um, but I'd be really sad to lose all these because I feel like I couldn't, I couldn't get it back. And, and even when I got it back, it just wouldn't be the same. Um, these are the ones that are special where it's like, there's no way that I could get these particular decks back and it just would never be the same. So I guess to me, that's, that definitely is what a forever deck means is that they are going to stay with me forever. <laughs> so, uh, 
I definitely can't wait to check out more uh, VRs to this. I feel like I got on this tag pretty early, which is uh, unusual for me. So I'm enjoying to watching more responses in the future. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Bye.